everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a very, very cute little koala that is holding onto the nail. The nail looks like tree bark, which is a very cool technique and something that I feel like could be applied in different applications. And if you want it to be more smooth, more wearable and comfortable, since it is a little bit rough and scratchy and it might catch on things like hair and clothes, you could encapsulate it and it would be very smooth and it would be still absolutely gorgeous and look textured through the clear. I hope you guys like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. To start out with this wood grain background, grab two shades of dark brown acrylic. One of them should be like a medium chocolate brown, one of them should really be a rich, rich dark color. If you don't have two colors that are dark enough, go with brown and black. That would be another great option. But just apply those over the entire nail. You want this really dark color. If they kind of just blend together, that's fine. A little bit of variegation is the goal. You don't want huge swirls or anything. So just a little bit of a, a mixed color. And then using two lighter shades of brown, a very light tan, and then more of a, I don't know, milk chocolate instead of a dark chocolate. Apply a wash of this color over the top. Use a little more color variegation here. It can be a bit more of a swirliness. After you have a certain amount of the nail done, if you can cover the whole thing, good for you. If it seems like you have to work section by section, go ahead and that's fine as well. But once it starts to turn matte, you can see that in the middle of my nail. It was starting to get where it looked, um, it didn't look as shiny anymore. Then you're going to grab a dotting tool, dip it into some acrylic powder. It can be any of the colors you've used so far. And you're going to just drag it through your acrylic with no to care, without a care in the world. Just keep going at it. You can mostly go vertical. Uh, if you want to do a couple horizontal lines, you can do that as well. I wouldn't go overboard on the horizontal and don't make them straight. Obviously, you don't want them to be perfect little zigzags either. You just don't want to overthink it. And that's it. That's all you got to do. If you wanted to encapsulate it so it wasn't quite so scratchy, then you could go ahead and do that. But otherwise, really, that's done. Now on a nail form backing, we're going to sculpt our koala. Koalas are just so cute. I can't believe I haven't done a koala nail yet. It's one of those things where after I thought about it, I'm like, oh, a koala. I was like, obviously a koala. What was I thinking? So with gray acrylic, we're going to sculpt our little koala hugging this tree nail. I'm going to do my koala. So he's kind of on the one side of the nail. I'm going to sculpt the body humped humped back on the side that's going to be touching the tree or against the tree try to keep a fairly straight line there you don't want it to go too bumpy on that side i'm going to add my koala's ears discard the whole straight line business for the ear obviously the ear is going to stick out but as far as like the side of the face and then down the tummy that's where you want to kind of keep that straighter line we are going to add the arms later so don't worry about arms legs any of that stuff just get that first head ears body now fit it up to the nail make sure it fits where you want it to fit plop down a tiny little bit of clear acrylic right where it's going to touch one section of the koala hold the koala up stick a little more clear acrylic underneath and then simply hold this until it starts to grab when i say hold it i mean really with your fingers just hang on to it and wait it is worth the wait to not have this be at the wrong angle. It's worth waiting and concentrating so that it stays where you want it to stay. If you set it to the side or try to prop it up, it always seems to go south in my experience. After your koala is sturdy, he's nicely attached to the nail. Continue using your gray. If you want to incorporate a secondary shade of gray, absolutely, it's amazing. It adds so much depth, not necessary. I am going to, I'm going to use a lighter shade of gray on the tummy of my koala and any of the lighter patches of fur. At this point, I have enough of a base to prop my legs up onto the nail so that I don't have to sculpt them separately. If you are concerned about sculpting over the top of that bark texture that's on the nail, because it does present its own set of challenges, you can sculpt the arm and leg separately and attach them onto the nail. I would do them separate from the koala's body and pick them up and place them while they are still pliable. As you are continuing this, add plenty of shape to the koala's face, more roundness. Look at plenty of pictures of koalas. That's the best part of, do of doing any of these designs is that you get to go and just look at a whole bunch of critter pictures. Whenever I do a realistic animal, that is hands down the most exciting part of it is just getting to look at a whole bunch of different animals and really examine how they're shaped. So I'm going to add a little bit of a pink hue inside the ears. As I'm adding that lighter gray color, my secondary color, I did a little bit of that under the chin. I'm also going to do that on the bottoms of the arm and kind of on the underside of the leg. As you're adding those other colors, as I said, it's not necessary. If you did not have two shades of gray, which actually I would say is a pretty standard thing to only have one shade of gray. There was a long time where the only gray I had was one that I mixed myself and it was very splotchy and I made it work, but that's obviously an option. And if you just have one shade of gray, 
you would go through and to make these lighter or darker tones, just use some acrylic paint later and kind of wash over the areas that need to be darkened or lightened. And I would decide to either darken or lighten depending on what the base color of gray you have. If it's a medium gray, I would lighten areas. If it's a very pale dove gray, then I would darken the areas that needed to be darkened. So you just have to make that decision, which would look more koala-esque. I'm going to take my lighter color and I'm going to be adding my koala's chin and cheeks. And then with black acrylic, add the koala's nose. As you are pulling that nose up, usually black acrylic tends to be a very smudgy color. If that is the case for you, just be careful not to blend it over the cheeks too much where it gets a little smudge where the lighter color of gray is. However, when you get above the nose, don't worry about it as much because we're going to add more of the lighter color acrylic on top of it just to brighten up and create a little hood over the top of the nose. Almost like an eyelid, just a little bit of a, of a bump over the top of the nose. With black acrylic, same thing. I'm going to be adding eyes. I, my first bead of black acrylic was a bit larger than I was wanting it. So I got rid of some, my second one, obviously, because once you do something one way, you overcompensate was a little small. I'm going to add a second bead to that one. And I'm going to just pull those eyes into a very rough eye shape. They do not have to be perfect. Just make sure that after you have them, they are about the same from side to side, not perfectly the same, but close. Add a touch of that pink over the eye. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the lighter color, gray acrylic over the top of the nose. And then with that lighter gray acrylic, I'm going to be adding some eyelids on my koala. This is where you really perfect that eye shape. So whatever problems your eyes may have had previously, it is okay because we're going to fix them now. So just go over the eyes, add an eyelid. Adding that eyelid is one of the things that really boosts the realism of this design because the eyes don't stick up anymore. They aren't these bug eyes that are on top. They're set into the face just by adding that eyelid, it boosts the realism tenfold. I'm going to take some very, very thin black acrylic and add a little bit of a shadow on the base of the ears, kind of around the bottoms of the cheeks, maybe the jawline, any place that I feel like needs that extra touch of definition. Look at koala pictures. Again, it's the best part of this design. Go ahead, stare at your koala pictures. Imagine holding one. That's what I always do. I'm like, oh, I'd love to hold you. Um, and just keep adding little bits, adding details, finding details. Consider it a scavenger hunt. Look at the picture and think, hmm, what can I do? What am I missing? What can I see in this picture that I might not have seen before? After that, pretty much you've got the koala's body done. The biggest thing that's left is going to be adding and finishing the feet. So a koala on their their hand has two toes that are facing in so towards their middle of the body when the hand's straight and three that are facing out, almost as if they have two thumbs and three fingers contrary to humans um, so you're going to do the two facing one way and three facing the other way I personally think their foot looks like a spider at this point I couldn't get that out of my head so I'm sharing with you like the gummy spiders like the gummy like the gel filled gummy spiders if they weren't gray but they were blue and pink you guys, I'm very tired, it's late, so you're getting all my crazy thoughts. Now for the back foot, instead of having the two thumb, three finger situation, we have just three toes. It's a little easier than getting those other toes at the right angle, or the front finger thumbs at the right angle. Just three toes, pretty easy, straight up, all good. After you have the feet paws finished, go through with your gray acrylics, both light and dark, your black acrylic, and finish the coloration on these. If you are not doing any extra coloration with acrylic and you're doing all of it with paint, skip that part. And now we have our koala sculpted, we can do all of our painting. So grab some black paint, dilute it with water, and just add some fur texture here and there. Add some, you know, outlining where it's needed around elbows, around knees, around toes, um, on the face. I like, like I said, those eyelids really sell it. So maybe do a little outlining around the eyelids and then you're going to need to add the toenails. So five toenails on the hand and three toenails on the foot. After that, and you've got all of your other things, I'm going to do some shading underneath my koala on the, on the tree. And then if you want to, you can add, um, a little white highlight here and there. So grab some white paint, dilute it just like you did the black paint and add some white texture. If you don't have the acrylics, this is the same, the different colors of acrylics, same process. You just do a little bit more of it and maybe dilute it a little bit more and maybe use some grays too. 
Add some little white specks in the eyes for reflection, some reflection across the nose, some matte top coat over your koala, and that's it. It's so cute. And this wood texture nail is such a cool effect. I'm tempted to just do it on my nails as part of a set, encapsulated so it wasn't so scratchy, but I feel like it's just so deep and so simple. It is really one of the easiest textures that you can do. So I hope you guys like this video as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to so my future designs as well.